our service begins. <clears throat> Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Sue? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made it and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into the courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Turb, if we could have today's psalm, please. Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You, you know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acclaimed with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are also, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost place of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Herb, if we could have the reading from Romans, please. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, 
so that we may also be glorified with them. I consider the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hopes that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies, for in hope we are saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Pastor Motor, I'm going to call up the gospel. Just give me a second to turn your mic on here. Okay, Pastor Motor. Okay. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, reading from the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven can be someone who sowed no seed in the field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow the good seed in your field? When, where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them up? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, she would uproot the weeds along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be bound but gather the wheat into the barn. Then he left the crowds and went to the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and good seed are children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is collected and burned up with the fire so it will be at the end of the age the son of man will send his angels and they will collect out his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will throw them into the furnace fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the father let everyone with ears. Listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's awful hard to believe sometimes. It's awful hard to believe what's going on around us, especially as children of God. 
In today's reading, we once again, after, after last week's, we once again go into the field, which for St. Matthew and Jesus before him seemed to be a very important part of their understanding of what it means to be a child of God. And that for certain can be seen in a real clear way in the parables that relate to farming, even though we aren't farmers. Last week we talked about them, and today we're going to talk about them today, but today in not such a good way. Because today we understand from what Jesus tells us that after all this hard work in the garden, and we all know about this, don't we? After all this work in the garden, the only thing that grows are weeds. And they got there and they said to Jesus, what's the matter? How come the weeds are in the flowers? Or the weeds are in the wheat, rather. And, well, let's take care of them. Let's pull them out of the ground and do what we can to get the wheat back growing. But interestingly, Jesus said, no, you can't do that. You're going to pull up the good seed along with the weedy seed. And when you get done, your harvest is going to be greatly reduced. And so he said, let them, re, re, let them alone. Let them grow up. Let them grow bigger than the wheat because that's what they're going to do because that's what weeds always do, I suspect. This is important for us because often as God's people, we think of only certain things in the world were gotten rid of. We would be able to live more hopefully. And perhaps we would. But the idea behind all of this is that is not the end. The end of it is the goodness and graciousness of God. God will let those weeds grow so that those who need the wheat will have it and prosper. And that's what God gives to us every day of our lives. God reminds us as we pray at meals, which I hope most of us do, that this gift is something that's given to us as people who have to be upheld, and especially during times of trouble. You see, that's what's happening to us. I don't know about you, but every day it seems as we turn the television set on, there's something more that's gone wrong. Some other person who has behaved badly. And we wonder, we wonder where is God in all this? Why doesn't God just wipe them all out and then we can all be happy? We can't because there are some who only have that little bit, little minor piece of faith. And that faith needs to be nurtured by them, weeds around or not. So I would challenge you to think about how that's going on in your life and your world these days. That where the things are bad and seems like they're never getting better, something is happening in the background. And in the end, the love and grace of God will be the thing that wins. And we will be sent forth to share that grace and love with those who do not yet know it or cannot understand it. So don't look down at the weeds. Look up at the wheat and give them thanks as you give thanks to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take a moment to reflect on the readings and on Pastor Motor's homily. Sue, if you could lead us in the Apostles' Creed, please. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the whole Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health earth. among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be <clears throat> taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Alec for today. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask through the, through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> one God for now and forever. Amen. Prayer today for mission under the um, Anglican cycle of prayer today. We pray for the Diocese of Maradi in South Sudan. We pray for the Diocese of Udi in Nigeria. And we pray for the Diocese of Highveld in South Africa. We pray for our Mother Church, St. James and St. James. And we pray for our big sister church, Caroline Church in Setauket. And we pray for the Church of the Nativity, Nativity in Raleigh, North Carolina. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we may offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may be truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray today for the sick and suffering, especially those you've asked us to pray for. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick sir. Today we pray for Betsy Palmetto, Jane and Jack Feigl, Lorraine Mignoni, Charlie Fenich, Frank Downs, Regina Orlando, Josephine Orlando, Father David Gable, Pastor Moda, Jim Silcott, Bonnie Cassidy, Richard C. Almash, Ellen Potenza, Garrett Rolfe, Franny Pastel, Gladys Henderson, Anna Kerr Good, Nicole Selinsky, for Ellie, Marlis Meyer, Denali, Jim Dane, Sharon Reaney, Jill Algate, Delina Downs, Kathy Clark, Neil Boyle Sr., Vincent Dendran, Dandrea, Leah DeVilla's grandmother, cousin, and family for the Coverdale family, Samantha and baby Amodio, Allison Maruzzi, Grace Fazin, Susan Colagieri, Frankie Cardamone, Marie Roman, Fred, the Gretto family, Allison Welch, Anna Madison, Ted Esser, Daryl Blasberg, Michael and Jackie Shares Beachy, and Jeff McLaughlin, Val and Nina Connolly, Bev Tyler, Bruce Lockerbie, and Bill Harper. Give your power of healing to those that minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray together for the departed. O oh God, by the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that your servants. We pray for Michael Gator Sr., Erna Monez, 
Police Chief David Dorn, George Floyd, Patrick Underwood, Claire Nichols White, Teresa Leibovitz, Jerry Devine, Judy Estes, Carol Richardson, Dee Downs, John Fink, Sandy Redfield, Joe Pistel, Canon Ed Wisbauer, Father Jim Spada, Mother Ann Plummer, Patricia Latore, Connie Mignoni, Clara Potenza, Helen Murphy, Bill Hodson, Jean Roman, Val Edna Arasto Velasquez, Kelly Bolgar, Herb Wilson, Richard J. Almash, Alita Hare, Barbara Dolinger, Dan Hennessy, Breonna Taylor, Barbara Reitz, Larry Siebert, Dorothy and John Donnelly, Ann Weber, William and Fran Ward, Max Wheat, Barbara Hoffman, Dwight Powers, Joseph Jr. and Joseph Sr. Mize, Karen Robles' daughter, Danica Catherine, Rebecca Connolly, and Dennis Madison. Being raised with him may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. We pray today for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Some special prayers for today. We pray again for a prayer for social justice. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of the United States, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I have a special prayer for, for a pandemic, and this is some of the prayers that we've done throughout the pandemic have been written by Lynn Unger, and I actually found this on the website of a synagogue, and you'll see the reference to our Jewish uh, cousins here. What if you thought of it as the Jews considered the Sabbath, the most sacred times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling. Give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands, reach out your heart. Reach out your words, reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or worse in sickness and health so long as we shall live. Sue, if you could lead us in the general thanksgiving, please. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages, amen. Almighty God, <clears throat> you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as made best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pastor Motor, if I could call upon you for a final blessing, please. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be and abide with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.